Hi there everybody and uh, welcome to another video. On today's video I have this uh, Honda Jazz. This Honda Jazz is a 2008. Um, I'm wearing a woolly hat today because it's suddenly become winter again. I think summer is finished. <laughs> um, we had it a bit too long actually. Um, nevertheless, um, I have this Honda Jazz in which uh, the suspension mount, it's, it has a bit of play on it. So I'm gonna be changing the top suspension mount, which is sitting, that's the, that's the top of the suspension there. And the mount is just under this metal. So we need to rem remove the strut in order to get to it. So the part I'm gonna be using is this one here. It's a Febby. Maybe you can see the part number there but you'll have to get the correct one for your own car. That comes with a, a bearing and the actual part that's worn out is this bit here, the rubber mount. So what happens is the interior here, the inner bit enlarges and then it creates play. So you may feel a knock or anything of that sort um, going on. Sometimes you might not feel much because all the weight of the car is on that mount and you won't maybe feel much. But the thing is, um, when you check it, if you're checking it for an MOT or something, you will find that the wheel actually moves and knocks. So if I... If I shake that, you can just hear it knocking there and can't really use my two hands right now, but there is play on the wheel. If I, if I rock it, if I hold it from here and here, there is play on it. So it moves like this. And if you hold the spring here, you can actually move the wheel and you can just see the wheel moving there a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but... But anyway, that issue is related to the top mount up there. So in order to get to that mount, we need a number of tools. Okay, so to remove um, the strut up here, we need to just uh, take that little cover out. So that's just like a little rubber cover. You can slide that out. And then you're gonna need a 17 mil to open that. Uh, but also the actual shock absorber may, may start turning. So you want to hold it in place with a T40. So I got this little tiny ratchet with a T40 in it and I just lean it against the plastic here. But um, if you haven't got one of these, it will be a little bit difficult to get a T40. Well, any torques in there because of the this part here. Um, so which means you may have to remove this cover in order to be able to put a, a ratchet, a big ratchet in here because there's just no room for it. Um, so try, or you can use, I don't know, maybe uh, just a Torx with a spanner or something, something that you can put in there. Um, and then with your 17 mil, you can then undo this. This nut. Hopefully that nut is not going to be too hard to remove. And this nut is not the one that holds the spring in place. This just holds the strut up here. So you can remove this nut with confidence. In other cars this nut it's the one that holds 
the spring in place so it would be a different story you couldn't just remove it It'll, the strut will be held in by other uh, nuts uh, sorry bolts around this area but anyway we're concentrating on this Honda so let's not talk about other cars um, so you can remove that and remove this now that's the other nut that holds the spring in place and this is the the, the um, top suspension mount that we're going to be replacing um, so we can put that to one side and just make sure uh, you put it in the way you came out so you got the washer there you got that and then you got the nut on top um, for the if you're gonna change the bearing you're gonna have to compress that spring and you're gonna need some of these clamps these clamps um, help you compress that spring and you need I think it's a 19 mil or something like that for this although I use the air gun in here I put the air gun in there and I use that but I don't normally uh, like compressing springs to be honest um, and sometimes I put three or four of these to keep it secure um, but like I said this is probably in the past year or two uh, the only the one spring I'm doing um, <laughs> as a result of me avoiding changing broken springs or any doing any kind of job related to springs so um, with that said I'm gonna remove the wheel and then we'll uh, undo the nuts and bolts underneath in order to get this uh, out. Okay, so got the wheel off. Um, the wheel is held in by 19 mil nuts and obviously you're locking, locking wheel nut for the locking wheel nut there. Remove the four of them and wheel comes out. Now we need to undo this bolt and nut here. That's a 17 mil. And also we need to just disconnect this cable here. And that cable is just plugged in there basically. We have to push on the clips on the side here so we can release it trying to be careful so we don't break the little clips which I think that one snapped actually saying that see it's quite brittle plastic in there nevertheless just just a little clip uh, we can hold it in with a cable tie so it's, it's not an issue but you could try not to snap it like I did and next, uh, we can undo those. There is that one and there is the one at the bottom. So I'm gonna use an air gun, but obviously you can use a ratchet, uh, but you might need a power bar just to break it free and hold it with your spanner there. So I'm just holding that in place. And that piece can come out. And then we'll do the same for the bottom. So things work a lot faster if you're using an air gun. Otherwise, it can take a while. And obviously, if you're going to use a ratchet or whatever, it can be a little bit hard. So use some WD-40 on, on these bolts because they just uh, obviously collect corrosion out here and then the nut struggles to come out so I'm just gonna add a little bit of grease on this 
for refitting purposes. And same on this one. And that is out. Now we have the anti-roll bar um, link here. You can try to remove that as well if you remove the whole strut. But in this case, we can just about um, maneuver this in such a way that we don't have to remove the anti-roll bar link. So there's my strut, there's a lot of dust, obviously because so much. The amount of dust you can actually see more on the camera than you can actually see flying around, which is why it's a good idea to wear a mask, usually when doing these kind of jobs. Um, and funny enough, I'm not wearing one at the moment, so this is our mount. All this part gets worn out and gets um, play on it. So this gets a bit of play on it as well. That's why it's a good idea to, to change the whole thing together. So that's the new mount there. That's what we would go ahead and fit in there. But I'm gonna change this bearing as well as it seems to have. I don't know, a bit of play. It's my new bearing there. A lot firmer. Um, and for this nut, we need a. 19 mil, but you can't remove this until you compress the spring. And that's where these clamps come in handy. So I'm just gonna use this one on the side to help the compression. this one on this end actually When compressing the spring, um, it, it could move out of uh, place. So you just need to make sure it's sitting in the correct position. Um, the position, it's not something you can miss. The end of the spring goes into a little coil like, which is purposely made at the bottom and same at the top. But we'll try not to move it. And also, if you're uh, holding this on top of that, just uh, make sure this metal bit here, this plate, doesn't get bent or damaged. It might be and bend a little bit, just unbend it when you finish. So <clears throat> I think normally you would use two clamps, but I just like to use three just in case. Be on the safe side of things.
Okay, got my clamps in there. And now, <clears throat> just be careful with your uh, brake fluid <clears throat> uh, pipe there as well, or a uh, rubber hose, I mean. Okay, let's get this on there a little bit better. So I'm going to use the air gun for tightening this just for fast process. All right, let's start with this one. You can obviously use your ratchet. spring is now loose it's moving a little bit which means now I can remove that there so like I said that is a 19 mil right, get that in there Okay, that little bearing can get a little bit stuck just on the rubber there, but should come out. Right, so I'm standing away from that in case anything happens here but like I said I'm not really uh, a fan of spring compressing so now I have my nut in there and uh, as soon as that is in there I already feel <coughs> better Okay, so you may need to hold this to tighten that, but I think in this case I'm using the air gun, so it should should already be tight. But you can use that and basically make sure it's tight. So that is tight, can't tighten it anymore. And now I'm going to release the spring. And like I said, just make sure the spring is sitting in the correct place when you release it. So I just wanna see. Oh, I can see it's uh, it's moved a little bit. Just need to put it in that direction. And that's about right. Now we can undo the clamps. Because that is secure, so... So we'll undo them 
bit by bit, not just a one at once and then and then the others at once because I don't otherwise we leave too much pressure on one of them. Okay, that is done. So just to make sure um, your spring is, as I said, just sitting in the correct place, which is just that little groove there. You can just see the, where the spring stops there. Um, to be honest, at the top, there is a little bit where you can, on, on this cover here, there's a bit where the spring stops, so you know where it is. And now we can get our new mount. So now it's just a matter of repeating this back. So you just, you might need a, a screwdriver just to line this up. So we have our two bolts in there. I'm just gonna put the bottom one first before refitting the top ones. It's a little bit easier. Now we just need to do the top, plug that in there. Obviously, it might be a little bit loose because I broke the clip. But if anything, could potentially use a cable tie just to make sure this stays in place. Just to make sure that little wire doesn't come up flying. I think that wire goes to the uh, speed sensor of the of the wheel there. So now, just make sure that isn't rubbing against the disc here, so you haven't got any grinding noise. Because if you were holding the suspension like me on top of that, it may bend a little bit, but it's usually okay. It's quite strong metal and then I mean that already feels better there I'm just gonna put the wheel back okay so I've got all that in. I, I normally don't over tighten. I don't like to over tighten that locking wheel nut um, because it can get damaged, especially because I'm using the air gun. Um, so the other ones, I do tighten them a little bit more. So anyway, I'm going to lower the car now and uh, we can do the top. So here we are at the top, just putting a little bit of grease on that start there and then we have our cover here just as it came out just gonna go back in get that nut in there all the way and we can tighten that 
the moment it's not rotating. Because if the middle, if the center starts rotating, then we need to hold it in place. Okay, that's nice and tight. That didn't really turn, so don't really need to over tighten that. And put the little cover on it. So that's pretty much a job done. The other side I have to do as well, and exactly the same procedure. There's no difference here, only. Um, well, I think this is, uh, that's your positive there, that's your negative. So, because if you have your wrench on that and it touches that, <laughs> you won't get a spark. But if your wrench went from there to there, then it would uh, spark. So maybe the only thing to be aware of. Otherwise, same procedure. I've already done it, to be honest. Um, so um, now <clears throat> we'll be able to check here. There's no movement at all is really nice and firm no knocking nothing so on that note it's happy days we got um, our suspension sorted and uh, we can go through the MOT without any issues so um, hope this video helps don't forget to subscribe and to like my videos um, so we'll see you on the next video um, take care of yourselves